Hello everyone! Today's episode is brought to you by the color red. So stick around to learn more about the colors of red wine. I'm Annie Shapiro, sommelier and wine consultant in New York City. But today I'm with you wherever you are. Divino Wine School is a way for me to share my experience of learning to taste and appreciate wine with you. So let's get started. Today is day four and it is all about red wine. So pour yourself something nice if you want to. As usual, you can also just watch and listen, but it's easier to grasp with a glass. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it right now. Click that button. I also recommend you enroll. It's completely free. The link is down in the description and when you enroll, you'll find out in advance what we're drinking and what we're tasting. And you'll also get the class notes. For those of you who are following along, were you able to find a Burgundy or a Pinot Noir made in a similar style? As usual, I've brought something along to help keep my scent vocabulary in peak form. Mushrooms and dirt. As it ages, Pinot Noir, especially Burgundies, take on deep earthy notes along with high toned fruit notes. Mushrooms are a great example of that. Not everyone has mushrooms lying around the house, so if you need to press pause, go grab some dirt. I'll wait, no problem. In the last episode, I explained how grape skins impact not only the color, but also the texture, the flavor, and the finish of the wine. If you missed that, I encourage you to check it out. Day three, colors of white wine. In red wine, the skins stay on much longer during the winemaking process. Darker, thicker skins produce more aroma, more flavor, more texture, and a lot of tannins. We'll talk about tannins in another episode down the line, but the easiest way to think about tannins is like biting into a really unripe piece of fruit that sucks all the liquid out of your mouth and makes your cheeks pucker in. Like that. You do want tannins in wine in moderation because like acidity, tannins give wine some energy and a long, healthy life. Some scientists believe that tannins can give us longer, healthier lives too by cleaning out our blood and preventing heart attacks. Do I need another reason to drink red wine? As Cher Horowitz would say, as if. Remember it's important to always have something white behind your glass when you're observing the color. So take a look, if you haven't already, pour yourself some wine and decide, is it violet red? Is it ruby red? Is it garnet red? Is it brick red? You might be thinking, Annie, this just looks like red wine to me. Well, if you drink a lot of red wine, it's time to start paying attention. As usual, practice makes perfect, so take your time. There are a ton of charts on the internet you can download. Just make sure when you're looking at the wine and comparing it to those charts, you've got something white behind it. In addition to decoding the color of your wine, it's also important to look at how opaque it is. Is it really compact or can you see through it? Is your wine almost transparent? Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Syrah are very dark and compact red colors, whereas Pinot Noir, Sangiovese, and Nebbiolo are much more transparent. As you can see, or maybe not see, depends on how big your screen is, this wine is almost completely transparent. I opened a 2016 Premier Cru Red Burgundy, which is 100% Pinot Noir, and it definitely has a tendency towards transparent red color. The color can tell you a lot about what your grape might be. As I said, Pinot Noir tends to be transparent, but it can also tell you what to expect when you smell it and taste it. Wines that are more compact and opaque in color are more likely to pack a heavier punch on the palate and have much more intense aromas like jam and chocolate or coffee. Wines that look lighter in the glass are likely to feel lighter on the palate. The wine growing and wine making process also affects the color of the wine, which gives you even more clues. You might have read somewhere that wine making begins in the vineyard. It starts with the grapes. Modern wine making standards like the DOC in Italy and the AOC in France often dictate how many grapes per plant the winemaker can harvest. This forces them to select only the healthiest, ripest grapes with the thickest, healthiest skins. This results in a richer color and richer aroma, but healthier grapes also means more sugar. And more sugar translates to more polyalcohol and alcohol in the fermentation process. And that translates to a silkier, warmer, richer palate. And what is a silkier palate? Think of the difference between water and honey. Large scale and wealthy wineries can afford to prune back their grapevines all season long. This results in fewer grapes, but big, healthy, juicy, fat grapes, which results in big, fat, juicy wines. The highest quality wines come from both grapes that are super healthy and bursting, as well as grapes that aren't quite there yet and have enough acidity and tightness and tannin to create a more balanced blend in the end. 
In the case of Burgundy, especially Premier Cru, which is an extremely high quality wine, we are dealing with a naturally thinner skinned grape that produces a lighter color and a lighter body by nature. In red wines, after a few years, the color pigment from the grape skin starts to fade away. It fades first from violet red to ruby red, then ruby to garnet, then garnet to brick, and finally to an almost translucent amber color. For red wines that are destined to age for decades or more, like Bordeaux, you might not see that transparent brick red color for years. But depending on the grape variety, these color changes can happen sooner than later. Take for example, the Nebbiolo grape, the one that is used for Barolo. This turns a brick red color really, really quickly, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's ready to drink. Nebbiolo is by nature a very, very tannic grape, so those wines need time to relax. Color and opaqueness are great clues as to what's coming in the glass. For example, if you're drinking a relatively young wine, but you see it is transparent and almost a brick red, that is most likely a Nebbiolo, in which case you should expect to smell black cherries, licorice, and even tar. What? Tar, yes, that is right. So if you were lucky enough to drink enough Nebbiolo, you might see that color in the glass, that transparent brick red color, and then think, hmm, what if I smell tar, licorice, and black cherry? And that will be your confirmation. Let me know what you were tasting and what you noticed from today's lesson in the comments below. And of course, ask me anything. I'll do my best to get back to you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Click the button right now. In the description, you'll also find an Enroll Now link. If you enroll, which is completely free, you will know what we're drinking in advance, what we're tasting and talking about, as well as get a copy of the class notes. See you next Thursday. I'm taking this burgundy to go.